Hello, Heart of the Lion Ministries. This is Evangelist Christian back with you again with another message. I want to go ahead and get straight into this message and just share what uh, Yahuwah has placed on my heart at this time of year. It might be a little bit difficult for some people, but when you're given a message, you just have to obey and give it. And this is not a new message for me, but it is maybe for this time of year. So what I want to do on this message, instead of confirming all of the details and my points that are right, instead of trying to point out my correctness, even though I will speak and teach the Bible accordingly, I want to challenge you in this scripture so that you can do your own research. Because the reason why I titled this message as Biblical Myth Busting is there are things in our traditions and our customs and what we believe that are actually just traditions and customs and not really prescribed by Yahuwah, by Elohim, by our God. So I want to get straight into this. This is Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. And I'm not going to have to really explain to you what I'm getting at when I read it, but this is the custom that I want to challenge you with in this time of year. I know a lot of people love Christmas, and so I have to say right away, obviously I love God, I love Christ, I love our Father who created us and sent His Son to die for us on the cross of Calvary. But I'm also about exposing the truth and not just the lies. See, there's exposure is good on both sides. It must be of the truth and of the lies. And so what I want to do here is I want to expose the lie that this custom is of, of Yahuwah, of the Father. And I want to expose the truth that what was practiced and worshipped at this time was not a festival called Christmas, but Hanukkah, even though it's coming a little early uh, this year. So let's go ahead and just get straight right into it. Thank you for everyone uh, joining. God bless you. I appreciate you, you joining and, and coming in live, even though this will be recorded for a future time. But right here in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1 through 5, it says, Hear ye the word which Adonai speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus saith Adonai, Do not learn the way of the Gentiles, do not be dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the Gentiles are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are futile, for one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fashion it with nails and hammers so that it will not topple. They are upright like a palm tree and they cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot go by themselves. Do not be afraid of them for they cannot do evil nor can they do any good. So right here, to give you a proper context, there's around nine chapters before this, but around the last three, four chapters up to this point, so you can have a better context of what's happening, right here, Yahuwah is rebuking the people of God. They're in exile in Babylon, close to the people of the Chaldeans, which are into, which I'm going to explain in a second, a lot of... Um, God has put signs in the stars, but they, they used it in a demonic way to receive power and to follow their future, like astrology. So, anyhow, they're in exile being punished for their rebellion. Because, as you read the scriptures, the majority of the time, they were not in obedience. They were in punishment, because when they were in obedience, they were invincible. When they were in obedience to God, they were invincible. But while they're in exile, God is rebuking them. This is a rebuke right here. This isn't just like a psalm or a proverb where he says, okay, don't do this, and then, you know, and then they, it keeps going. This is a whole context picture that Yahuwah is rebuking Israel and showing them why they're in exile being punished in the land of Babylon. Like I said, very close to to the people of the Chaldeans, which worship the stars. And so, before we get to this, he's laying out some things, like the Ten Commandments that they have broken, which are already valid enough, and already 
bad enough. But there's two major discourses that he really gets into and shows his heart that it is burning against the people of God, against the people of Yahuwah. And the first one, before I get back to the scripture that I just read, was child sacrifice. Child worship. Uh, uh, it was a... Uh, it was worshiping by sacrificing children. Sounds very uh, familiar with the abortion business that we have going on. They have perfected that, but before it comes out of the womb. And they know very well that there's life uh, before it comes out of the womb. But that's a side thing, but not, uh, nevertheless a very important thing. So, worshiping to Molech. Molech was a, an idol, a statue that they would worship children, they would sacrifice children to, and in the scriptures, they talk about, I'm against you for making your children pass through the fire, walking the fire. That's what it's called. Ultimately, they would be destroyed, sacrificed, and killed. What that idol would look like, Molech, is they would put fire, you know, wood, in this idol, and it had two arms like this. I think it kind of looked like a bowl, also. Its two arms came out like this, and when they heated it really, really hot, Guess what color it would turn? Beet red. Very bright red. They would place the children onto the arms of the idol and it would be sacrificed. I'm not going to say anything more to this, but it's very interesting that Santa is dressed up in red and children go on his lap. Let's get past that. That was the first thing that God burned against Israel was rebuking them while they're in Babylon. This second major thing, now once again, there were some other smaller things that he mentioned. Do, 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 do. You know, the Ten Commandments and other bad things. But the two main ones, that was the first one with child sacrifice. The second one is we're right here. They're in exile for not obeying God and taking the practices of the heathen. This is it. Once again, let's read it. Hear the word of Adonai, which God speaks to you, house of Israel. Jeremiah 10.1 Thus saith Adonai, Do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Do not be dismayed at the signs of the heaven, for the Gentiles are dismayed at them. So there was a lot of star worship. Uh, they, didn't give God cre uh, they didn't give God glory, Elohim glory, that he created them. They actually looked to them for their future, instead of commanding them like Joshua did the sun to stand still. <laughs> instead of taking authority over them, they worship them instead. And so, before I get going into that tree thing, it says, do not, be, do not be dismayed at the sign of heaven, for the Gentiles are dismayed at them, for the customs of the pupil are futile. Customs means tradition. What God wants to exhort people today is, just because it's a long time ago, just because it was in the 50s, or 2,000 years ago, or 3,000 years ago, God does not exist in time. Time doesn't exist for God. He's just as offended then as he is today. Sin is sin. And here we go, right into the scripture, it says, For one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They decorate it with silver and gold. What does that sound like today? That's a Christmas tree. That's a Christmas tree. But God says, don't do it. But we're doing it. There's something wrong here. So this message is a challenge, a respectful challenge and love, but a challenge for you to dig into the scripture of what's factual and what is custom, what is tradition. God will not partner with customs or traditions. He's kingdom. He's not about our traditions in our country. Though he loves each country, he loves every country. And he likes the good things about them. But the ones that have broken his laws and placed it into Christianity and sold it under a Christian, God, a Christian umbrella, which Christmas is. Don't get me wrong, I love Christ, but Christmas and all of its symbols is paganism, witchcraft, and Christianity. And the reason why they put Christianity on it is so it could be sold to the church. Nothing wrong with being God, you know, happy that. <laughs> Christ was born, even though he probably wasn't born at this time in the winter. But um, nothing wrong with being glad and happy about that. It should be a daily event. But this practice, if you if 
I have to say this very calmly, if you cannot see that this scripture is not exposing that we've taken on practices that God said not to do and that are evil, then it's not that you don't understand, it's that you don't want to understand. See, God knows our hearts. He knows whether you want to understand it or not. And so this scripture should trigger you to dive. I'm not going to convince you in this 30-minute, whatever this is, 45-minute video. I'm not here to convince you 100% that I'm right. What I'm here to do is to trigger you to do your own study in the scriptures, in history, to see that there's something wrong here, and we're offering God profane worship that he said never to do, calling it him. See, this is what Israel did, exactly the same thing, when they came down with the uh, when Moses went up into the mountain to get the Ten Commandments, they worshiped a gold calf. Did you know they didn't, they didn't just embrace the calf? That's not what they did. They didn't fall away from God and say, we're just going to worship this God of the gold calf. They mixed the two together. So God won't get angry in their view. So we won't get in trouble with God, but we're going to have this golden calf and worship it and do all the rituals they did with that. They put them together. That's what Christmas is. And the Christmas tree is a pagan. Trees aren't pagan. Trees aren't evil. I get that. Understand that. But God was there when this tradition started. And that tradition is still here that even bled into the church. This was one of the reasons they were in exile. Besides Moloch and child worship, which is bad enough, this was the other one that he's burning. He, this is a rebuke. He's not just saying, don't do this, don't do that. It would be good enough if that's all it was. He's burning here. He's burning in rebuke. And he said, I didn't deliver you so you could go run your own program. I didn't deliver you so you could do your own thing and put my name on it and say that I'm okay with it. You're called to worship me the way I prescribe. Otherwise, it's all or nothing. So the customs that we have with Christmas and others are there like Easter, which is the god of of Ishtar is right in the name of that. It's a mixture. I get it that it's not all evil and it's not all good. It's a mixture. But God is against that and he's rebuking people for that mixture. And it can't be any clearer here with Christmas. The others are clear, but this is like, honestly, is like a slap. And when I read this years ago, I knew that there was something wrong. <laughs> that we, uh, that there were, this just wasn't something right. And if you look into the symbols of what they mean, there's a lot of websites. There is a good chance, we know it's not right. It's right here in our face. But you could come to your conclusions what it exactly means. But the symbols, why they practice with the balls and the gold and the tinsel, is very highly likely actually perverted. I'm just going to leave it there for now. Do your own research. Get into it. We know right here God says, don't do it. it. Why you're in exile? And the Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm going to explain this scripture. I'm going to explain to you right now. Is, um, Well, I explained that earlier. God is out of time. He doesn't, he's, he's exactly, okay, he's right there right now and he's right here with me right now all at the same time <laughs> time does not exist with god and so i want to just challenge you with this to reject the pagan customs that we have inherited and to embrace god's prescription of the seven feasts and there is one which i'm going to explain that was uh that was uh observed at this time, which is Hanukkah. So I just exposed the false, and now I'm going to expose the truth. So I want to get to Colossians. Let's go ahead and turn to Colossians 2.16, because this is a scripture. I'm very aware of the arguments that 
non-believers have, and especially the church has. This is one of them, so I'm going to target this for you right away. Colossians 2, 16 through 23. I get it. It says it right here. Let no one judge you in food, in drink, regarding of a festival, or a new moon or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substances of Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding, intruding into those things which he has not seen vainly, puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom all the body, nourished knit together by the joints and ligaments, grows with increase that is of God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as through living in the world, do you subject yourself to regulations? This is a key scripture. In this, I'm going to back up on, but I'm going to mention it here because it's in order. Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with using, according to the commandments, the doctrines of men. Men, not God. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. People use this to get away with all sorts of rebellion and sin, especially with days, food, and holidays and Sabbaths. Let me clarify what this means. Number one, it says, do not judge. Okay, let's back up. When the Bible says, do not judge... In other verses, like in Matthew, lest you be judged, it's not saying that we don't preach the truth or stand for righteousness. A big assumption is when it says do not judge is that God said we don't do and observe anymore. That's a lie. That's a false. It means just because someone's in a different place than you, do not judge that person, just like the other judgment scriptures mean. But the other proper judgment scriptures, which are an exhortation to do it properly in protocol, doesn't mean that we don't preach the word what is true. It doesn't mean we walk away from the truth. It means we don't judge that person. It doesn't mean the doctrines of God's words are gone, disappeared, that he annihilated them. No. The only thing in God's law that has been done away with is the Levitical sacrificial law of the animals. Because Jesus, Yahushua, Yeshua, is our sacrificial lamb. This has been done and gone away with, but that was the only thing. That's why the New Testament is very much known, especially with Messianic believers who understand the Hebraic Jews, is really more a renewed covenant. Because that was eliminated, but everything else was there and we enter that renewed covenant through the shed blood of Christ. So, when it says do not judge you, it doesn't mean that it's no longer valid. It just says have the right heart. Take the speck out of your eye and the arrogance out of your eye so you could share the truth with the people of God without being arrogant. Number two in this scripture that people use out of context is, I already said it earlier, a lot Okay, what he was targeting also at the same time is there was a lot of man-made Sabbaths, fastings, and food portions that the Pharisees added to God's word. How do I want to confirm that? It says in verse 23, these things have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion. Paul would never call what was right in the first place, self-imposed religion. The Pharisees added extra Sabbaths, unbiblical Sabbaths, fastings, food rationings, don't eat this, this, that. That's what he's targeting. But as the biblical things, and not just judging that, but the biblical holidays, feasts and holidays, what Paul was saying is, don't judge them. As a messianic, as I would consider myself, and there's some few that are going to listen to this now, or you are now, did you understand all of the mysteries from pagan holidays to, you know, Sabbaths, all that? No, you don't understand all of that. You're a baby. 
but you're born again. It's true. So what Paul is saying here, in its context, is rebuke the false that the Pharisees added, but as the true would go, let them, the Holy Spirit, add that in their own time. Don't judge them right now, because they don't have all the mysteries of the world and the doctrine uh, figured out on day one of salvation, or, day, or, or the first year. That's what the proper context is. It's not saying that we don't observe what God said to observe. What is the Ten Commandments or the Seven Feasts? So this word is taken out of context and whipped out like an ace, like playing uh, poker. Like, here's my ace. Ha, ah, I could do anything I want now. Don't judge me with the moon and, the, and all this stuff. No, no, no. It's saying, judge. It's, it's not saying, it's gone. It's saying, don't have the right heart. Be humble. Be broken. Let God mold you and have your heart. Don't think you're better when you're sharing this with someone else. That's what that's saying, along with the two other points I just mentioned to you. On top of that, there was extra false holidays and Sabbaths and new moons and food rationings. That's where a lot of people make excuses for eating pig, eating meat. No, God didn't say you can eat whatever you wanted. These were the other things that the Pharisees were adding onto it. So, this scripture is used highly out of context. And I wanted to explain that because I know that's the one people whip out uh, as a sword and use it incorrectly instead of letting the sword, uh, the word, speak in genuinity for itself. So what time of year is this after I've exhorted you to, to, you know, to reject pagan uh, customs like Christmas that's around the corner? I don't believe Thanksgiving is bad. Uh, just as a side caveat, a side issue there, I don't believe that one is a bad one, uh, even though that is really for America, I think. Uh, I don't think that's really for other countries. But what type of year, <clears throat> what was normally worshipped at this time, that is not part of the seven feasts of the menorah candlestick, was Hanukkah, and I'm going to show you that Christ was worshipping at that exact time of year, where it even says in winter. Let's go ahead and turn to John uh, <clears throat> John 10, 22. I can't see my time, but I, I don't think I'm over a half hour, but I'm probably pretty close. Okay, so at this time of year, and it's coming early this year, it starts at the end of November, I think the 26th, and it goes right into uh, December 3rd or 4th, or something like that. But what type of year that Christ observed... If you want to get to biblical observation, myth-busting customs, biblically, in truth, Yeshua practiced Hanukkah at this time of year. And I'll briefly explain to that because it's not just giving gifts and all this that you know a lot of people think about. Even though that happens, and I can't say that's wrong necessarily, but I'm trying to get to the biblical truth of what Hanukkah is. So 1022, John, it says, Now it was the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. By the way, if you don't know what dedication means in its original language, it's Hanukkah. Because the temple was being rededicated after winning a war. An army, a, a, a small army of Jews won the temple back. So, Feast of Dedication is Hanukkah, confirmed in the scripture. And it says it was winter in verse 23. And Yeshua walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So he's observing it. He's there. Then the Jews surrounded him. And there's the normal traps. They're trying to kill him, basically. Um, how long do you keep us in doubt? If you're the Christ, tell us plainly. Yeshua answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe me because you were not my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Verse 29, My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my hand. I and my Father are one. So the point of that scripture is to show that Yeshua was there worshiping Hanukkah personally. So, quickly, what is that, and how can we be encouraged of that? Because this is exposing the truth. Christmas, or the... the Traditions of Christmas, that's exposing the lie. Here, Hanukkah is exposing the truth because they both go together. Because there's a lie, what's the truth? 
Christmas is the lie. Hanukkah is the truth. So, in Hanukkah, briefly, what happened is um, Epiphanes, King Epiphanes the Fourth, outlawed, made it a law that the Jews could not practice their customs, their worship anymore, and they took over the temple, and they forced the Jews, they were forcing everyone, including the Jews, into Zeus worship, where they're even offering and sacrificing pigs on the altar, because they know that's in the word, and it was desecrating to God and his people, to Yahuwah. So, by the way, that's where the custom of ham and pig comes from at this time, is from this situation, where uh, it's, it's probably happened before that as well, but this tradition of where King uh, Antichicus was forcing the Jews to eat a pig. Anyhow, that's where that custom comes to at this time of Christmas and even is bled over into Easter, which is another uh, pagan holiday uh, that is pretty clear, maybe not as slam dunk in my opinion is this, but it, it's it's there, and I can get to that at a, at a later time. So this is what was happening at this time, and the Jews were infuriated, and a small army of Jews banded together called the Maccabees came together, and they warred against a much more sophisticated technologically sophisticated, if I could say that at that time. Uh, they had weapons and a, and a real army. But they rose up against King Atychicus and his army at the time, and they won the temple back. And because they won the temple back, they had to sanctify it and purify it so they can worship God again. And there was a ceremony that was necessary to do that before they worshiped God again. So that's what... Hanukkah is, they took over the temple, they rewon it with an impossible, actually, it's just as big as a miracle that this ragtag, uh, very unlikely army of Jews won. That, to me, just as big as a miracle. But in the sanctifying of the temple, which we will classically see the menorah, even though I, I believe the real menorah is seventh stick, but, you know, there are nine stick for, for Hanukkah. Uh, that to, to me, I call that a secondary menorah. But in the rededication of the temple, there was only one jar of oil. But it lasted eight days in the sanctifying of the temple. And that was a miracle of provision for the Jews. And Hanukkah is a feast that's encouraging because it confirms... Not only that Christ observed it, but Yahuwah, Elohim's miracle working power. When your back is against the wall and you have needs, God, and I believe in miracles at all times, not just when you're in need, but there's something about the need that triggers that miracle. Uh, God is a miracle working God. And so people celebrate this time that whatever war and battle you're going through, just like the Jews and the Maccabees, God is going to come through for you also at this time. But I hope it was clear also how the eight stick, it's really a nine stick because in the middle, you use the middle one to light one day at a time and you let them burn out fully. You don't reuse them. And it's lit from right to left as the tradition was go, as I am super cramming everything all at one time uh, in, in this message. So, but that's how it goes. And once again, this time of Hanukkah is a time to battle and to bring down satanic armies. Ask God to do that in the opposition, not only that is against your life, but is in the land. And we see the devil raging in many, many different fronts. So, not only was this word in this teaching an exoneration to look into the customs of Christmas and to reject them, but to embrace the truth, which is really Hanukkah at this time, and the bigger picture, the seven feasts that he laid out upon uh, for us throughout the year, which the seven candlestick menorah genuinely represents. The ninth stick, I believe, is, an, uh, uh, is good. It's still fine. It's just not made off of the... It's, 
it's not including on the feast of the candlestick because the menorah represents a lot of things the seven spirits of God and the seven feasts and the seven lampstands so that's normally how it goes um, some people will just have individual candles once again like I said you light one at a time from left to right but I hope this challenged you to dig deep to seek what is custom what is tradition and what is biblical I pray this was a, a, a blessing for you I know it's challenging it's not like some of my other messages I know I'm challenging history here I'm challenging tradition and customs but like the scripture said in Jeremiah God says don't pay attention to the customs of the traditions pay attention to me my kingdom what I said and don't blend them and mix them come out of Babylon like Revelation says into purity and my light and my glory will shine upon you and this is what the devil was always afraid of of obedience because when Israel was obedient they were untouchable actually their enemies were frightened of them and God doesn't want obedience in the church today because what makes you think that's any different for God's people in the new covenant a renewed covenant of even better things the renewed covenant through the shed blood no more animals but the shed blood of Christ I hope that was a blessing feel free to share that with someone you love or other people I pray that this um, unlocks a lot of revelation and whatever God is doing in your life concerning history times customs and whatever you have going on feel free to share this like I said Heavenly Father bless your people show them your word and your truth may your miracles like Hanukkah birth forth into every single person's life watching this right now may your truth and your light burn in their lives and whatever they're going through I speak your provisions to be manifested from the kingdom of heaven into their lives, whether it's salvation, whether it's healing for family members, or salvation for family members, or money, whatever it may be, or whatever the breakthrough and necessity is, may you answer that for all of those listening and watching now in Yeshua's mighty, mighty name. I pray that blessed you, and I pray that it will bless your family as well. Until next time, Yahuwah bless you, Yeshua bless you. Take care.